I've been using this secondhand Pixel 5 as my daily use phone for almost a year now. This one I picked up on eBay for about $115. It replaced my previous phone, which was also a year old Pixel 5, whose screen had been damaged from dropping it. I've owned every Pixel from 1 through 7, and in my view, the 5 is the one I prefer as my daily use phone. I'll explain why. Next. The Pixel 5 was released in October of 2020. I did purchase the Pixel 5 when it was released at that year's Google event, but as I'd done with all of my previous Pixels, I would trade it in the following year for a discount on that year's latest model. Now that I've owned every Pixel from 1 through 7, and I currently own a Pixel 7 Pro that I use for photography, I do feel I like the camera on the Pixel 7 Pro more than any other previous Pixel. The software has matured well over the years. Although the combination of lenses could be better, I can still do most of what I need to do with it. On the other hand, the Pixel 7 Pro is not a phone I'd want to keep in my pocket on a daily basis. I like smaller sized phones, and the Pixel 5 is of a size I'm more comfortable with. I recently installed Android 14 on my Pixel 5, so it has been getting the most recent Android updates, but that's supposed to end after 2023. I'm kinda hoping Google extends the end of support date for the Pixel 5, but even if it doesn't, the Pixel 5 will still be my go-to phone for at least a couple more years. This isn't a review of the Pixel 5, so I won't go over detailed specs of the phone. I am going to cover specific reasons why this is such an attractive phone for me, and maybe some of those same reasons could work for you as well. I tend to take a liking to compact things, and the phone I carry every day has to fall into this category. My simple gauge for measuring this is how easily the phone fits in my front pants pocket. Almost any phone will fit in my pocket, but I'm looking at whether it will fit comfortably. I did a Bing GPT search on phones similar in screen size to the Pixel 5, and this is what I got. I regularly check eBay for opportunities on iPhone 13 minis, but the bidding usually takes those prices beyond what I'm willing to pay. At this point in time, any Pixel 5 I own will be a used one. I've avoided buying a new one because I felt it wasn't worth the prices being charged. In the past couple of years, I've picked up 4 used Pixel 5s from eBay for prices ranging from $80 to $115. A couple with damaged screens, a couple working fine. The additional phones will be handy as backups for when my primary phone gets damaged. As far as the CPU, RAM, and battery life, I can get through a day without any complaints and with battery to spare. Apps run great, no crashing, stutters, or noticeable performance issues. I don't have to recharge midday. In fact, based on my use, the battery could last a second day, but I recharge anyway. I'm not a demanding user, but I do use my phone most of the day. I'd consider myself an average user. Occasional videos, an hour or two of music, constant emails and texts, and in and out of random apps. In this clip, I'm removing the screen from a Pixel 5 that is locked to the Verizon network. I'll later put this screen on one of my spare Pixel 5s that's unlocked but has a damaged screen. Screen replacement is kinda strange for a Pixel 5. Screens for the Pixel 5 run about $150, supposedly brand new on eBay. On the other hand, really good condition used Pixel 5 phones can be got for $150 on eBay. Everyone will have their own thoughts on this, but for myself, I'd rather get an entire phone in good condition as opposed to just a brand new screen. The brand new screen has gone through less usage, but in terms of image quality you'd get from either, I'm sure I could live with the screen quality of a used phone in good condition and I'd still get the rest of the phone for future use. These are the two phones I'll swap the screen between. The unlocked one at the top has no screen, but I'd like to keep that one available as my next spare. The carrier locked one is the one you just watched me detach the screen from. I can actually use carrier locked phones, which is why I own a couple of locked Pixel 5s. I simply use a mobile hotspot for Wi-Fi. 
Although, after years of doing this, I finally had a problem with this setup on a recent trip to Japan. Because my hotspot wasn't going to work there, I had to get a temporary data plan and found it in the form of an eSIM. I could have also rented a hotspot in Japan, but the eSIM was so much more convenient. After that trip, I realized it is a good idea to have an unlocked phone, even if I rarely use that capability. It does provide a useful plan B. Pixel cameras have always had a reputation for capturing great stills and reasonable video. Both my Pixel 5 and Pixel 7 Pro are using the same version of the Google Camera app. Although I use my 7 Pro for almost all of my photography needs, it's nice when I can resort to the 5 if I don't have the 7 Pro with me. The quality is similar. Some hardware features on my 5 are obviously missing, like slightly more wide angle and 5x zoom, but the 5's camera still produces respectable images. All Android phones have the same basic software security, with some features dependent on the hardware specific to each manufacturer's phone. On the Pixel 5, the rear-mounted fingerprint sensor has proven to be more reliable for me than any fingerprint sensor I've tried since. All fingerprint sensors provide a good level of security along with quick and easy access, but I've never gotten the Pixel in-screen sensor to work reliably. Where the in-screen sensor would fail about 95% of the time, the rear-mounted one works about 99% of the time. I've never figured out why the Pixel's in-screen sensor is so unreliable for me, but I don't mind sticking with the Pixel 5 for now. I'm the type of user who is fine with a phone that is not the fastest, brightest, or most technically advanced, yet has all the capabilities of a flagship phone, but just at a slightly lesser performance level. For me, this is what the Pixel 5 is. It has enough performance to do everything at a very acceptable pace and I feel it should continue to do so for at least another couple of years. So this has been an overview of my daily use Pixel 5. I hope my ideas and suggestions help you to find a great phone that's not at a great cost. Leave any questions and comments you have in the comment section down below. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.